It's an overcast morning on the Moroccan coast near Agadir. But the mussel harvest has to go on. These women collect some 50 kilos of the shellfish per day. It's their main source of income. The women who come from a village called Duira have increased their wages by joining together to form a co-op. They've also set up a small factory where the mussels can be cleaned, dried and packed. That's a huge improvement over the way they used to work. Thanks to modern technology, we now cook with gas and we've got these large pots. In the old days, we used to steam the mussels in tin cans, for instance, paint cans, on an open fire. For fuel, we used old clothing, plastic and shoes. Junk, basically. And we used to dry the mussels on the ground, where birds and cats came and ate them up. The women used to sell their mussels on roadsides for the equivalent of one and a half euros per 500 grams. Better processing methods mean they now earn about three times what they used to. Martin Tampa and Farid Uider from the German Agency for International Cooperation, the GIZ, helped the women get started. The project is also aimed at helping Moroccans adapt to the challenges of climate change. The traditional way of coping with climate deviation is no longer practicable here. So we need to find new forms of cooperating, living off the land and earning an income. To find out what that means for residents of Morocco's villages and cities, we travel to the center of the country. The two GIZ workers are on their way to visit other innovative projects. Suddenly a herd of camels appears on the road. These animals used to be fairly scarce in these parts. But, as we learn from talking to the mayor of the town of Ait Baha, nomadic camel herders are becoming a problem. And at the root of that problem is climate change. They never used to travel this far. But because of the lack of water in neighboring regions, the nomads now bring their herds here. That threatens the local agriculture. The cultivation of argan trees is immensely important here, and the camel herds are a threat. Camels feeding on argan trees may look peaceful and harmless, but they're the source of conflict between nomads and local residents. Thus far, no one has found a solution to the problem. And an even bigger challenge for Ait Baha is to normalize the water supply. When there isn't enough rain, the river dries up completely. Three years ago, there was too much rain, resulting in massive floods. Too little, too much. There's no chance for lasting stability in this region if people don't learn to deal with extremes. Community leaders sought expert advice, and an idea emerged. Our focus is on letting water seep into the ground in mountainous regions so that it gets added to the groundwater. We want to divert water away from the riverbeds so as to limit flood damage to buildings, settlements and agricultural areas. Moroccans are going to have to learn to think differently if they're to successfully deal with climate change. One obvious way forward is to exploit the potential of solar energy in North Africa. The town of Wazazat will be home to the world's largest solar energy facility. It's being partially funded by Germany. In future, this is where energy will be produced and fed into the national power grid. The facility is scheduled for completion in 2015 and should be a vital resource in a country largely without oil and gas reserves. This is a leading project in the world in uh, 
addressing the the environmental problems uh, related to using fossil fuels but also it's a project that is uh, going to give uh, Morocco some independency on the energetic side so uh, it is uh, very well seen and very well uh, considered by the whole Moroccan population. The Wazazat project is a massive undertaking but smaller ideas also make a difference. We dare and Tampa travel on to the village of Tamaite Ufela where a cooperative is trying to improve agricultural harvests. The project functions without a lot of money, so it could serve as a model for other projects and cooperatives. Mariam and Rakia Akado are part of the initiative, which aims at strengthening sustainable farming in the region. A drip irrigation system for watering crops has been introduced to deal with chronic water shortages. Local women have been taught how to avoid monocultures and use compost heaps, in addition to the new watering techniques. There are a lot of advantages to using drip irrigation. Normal methods are difficult because it hardly rains here. Drip irrigation allows us to collect water and use it on our fields. There are a lot of economic and other advantages. All of which means these women have a good chance of living from agriculture in future, despite climate change.